Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be talking about iterations. And firstly, I want to go over what iteration, what the word means. And then, uh, so hopefully we can build a bit of understanding about why we use iterations. And then I'll go over an example problem. So uh, what are iterations in general? Well, if you think of the, well, take an example like the iPhone. So every year Apple brings out an iPhone, uh, usually around September, and every year it gets better and better. So they, in 2007, I think, they brought out the first iPhone, and it was made of plastic, and it had a pretty bad camera and a pretty bad screen. Um, and then the next year, they made it a little bit better, better camera, I think, better screen. I think it was made of metal or glass or something. And they keep, every year, they keep improving the iPhone, until now we have um, you know, a bigger iPhone with a really good camera and a really nice screen. And so you get the idea. Every year they're making the iPhone better and better. So they take what they made last year, they take everything good about it, and they add some things, they make some improvements, and then they make the, the iPhone better the next year. So that's the, that, the idea of iterations is about taking something, improving it, and then uh, moving towards some kind of goal. Uh, so if you thought, if you think Apple's goal might be to make, say, the perfect phone. Okay, so let's say they're moving towards that goal. Every year they're, they're iterating the iPhone towards the perfect phone. Of course, there's no, no such thing as a perfect phone, but uh, that's, you know, if you thought about what, what goal they're aiming for, maybe that's what they're aiming for. Uh, so, so they're moving towards something, they're moving towards a solution. Uh, and then you can have different examples of iterations. So that would be an example of a, a, a converging iteration. And I'm going to introduce a couple of words here you may not have seen before, I'm not sure. but So you can say that the iPhone is converging towards the perfect phone. And then you can have iterations that diverge we call those diverging, and they're moving away from the they're moving away from the solution that you would want to get to. So if you think of an example like uh, movies, so you you might watch a movie and it's really really good. So it could be really successful and make lots of money, and then uh, so the producers decide to bring out a sequel. They make a sequel of the first movie. And then you see the sequel and it's pretty good, but it's not as good as the first one. And then that might be successful as well. So they make another, they make a third movie in the series. And then a few people go to, go to watch that. The fans of the first one go to see the third movie. And it's not quite as good as the second and definitely not as good as the first one. And you could say that if you were thinking of the aim of a producer is to make a good movie, then that, then the sequels of movies are diverging away from that. So there's two words there, converging and diverging. So iterations can converge towards the answer or diverge away from it. Okay, so that's important because when, when we're talking about iterations in mathematics, we want them to uh, be going towards the solution that we're looking for. Uh, and if they're diverging, they're not very useful. So when you're given a problem in an exam, it will always be a converging iteration. Later on, if you do A-levels, you will probably look at how to come up with converging iterations and how they are worked out, but you don't have to worry about that at this stage. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so there's a couple words that I've introduced, converging and diverging iterations. So, okay, so let's talk about mathematical iterations. Why do we use iterations? Well, let's firstly talk about quadratic equations. Hopefully you've seen these type of equations before. Uh, so you might have uh, an equation looking like this, and we call that a quadratic equation, where there's an x squared in there. And, then, and we're really good at solving quadratics. We can factorize those, we can use completing the square, and we also have a formula, uh, a pretty easy formula to solve quadratics. Uh, and uh, so we're good at quadratic equations, but then it comes to cubic equations where there's an x cubed and then a, a squared term and then an x and then uh, something else. 
So it might look like this. So that's an example of a cubic, and they're a lot harder to solve if they if you can't factorize them. If you can't factorize them, then uh, we don't really have an easy formula to solve cubics, and uh, sometimes to solve a cubic, we need to use iterations. Uh, so that so iterations can be kind of a simpler way to solve a cubic equation, and we want the iteration to be converging. So if we if we rearrange the cubic into an iterative formula and it's converging, then we can find a solution. Okay, so there's a lot to take in there. I, I went over a little bit of the understanding behind iterations just because I think that's important. So we have cubic equations and uh, we need to use an iteration to solve them. So let's look at an example. So you might be given, say, an iter iterative formula that looks like this. x, x sub n plus 1 equals minus 5 minus 6 x sub n squared. You might be given this, this iterative formula in an, in an exam, and hopefully when you see this notation, n plus 1 and n, and it's in this kind of form, your, your brain will snap to iterations and you'll know kind of the method or the strategy needed to solve it. And then they might say that x sub 0 equals minus 1.5, and then they're asking you to find they're asking you to find x, x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3. This is a typical example of an exam style question. Okay, so we know we're using iterations. And remember what I was saying, we take the, the product from last year or the solution from the first term, we put it into the formula, and we come up with the next term. So this is all this formula is saying is the next term equals all of this with the last term substituted into it. So we're given x0. So we can say x sub 1, the this first term, equals minus 5 minus 6 divided by x sub 0, which is minus 1.5 squared. Okay, so Really all it is is substitution. If you're comfortable with substituting things into formulas, then you should be okay with iterations. Okay, then we just need to go ahead and solve this. And these are always in calculator papers. So um, I'm just going to do this with a calculator. I guess you could try to do it without a calculator, but it would be pretty annoying. Uh, so we've got minus 5 minus 6 over 1.5 squared. And obviously that minus cancels out because when we multiply two negatives, we make a positive. So this is going to be 6 over 2.25, that's 1.5 squared. And then minus 5 divided by 6 divided by 2.5, that gives me 2.6 recurring. And then minus 5 minus 2.6 recurring is minus 7.6 recurring. Okay. So that is my first term in this iteration. Then what I need to do is substitute that back into this same formula, the same iterative formula. And you can do this as many times as you like. And as long as it's a converging iteration, it will converge towards the solution that you're looking for. If it's diverging, then it won't be any use. Okay, so we sub that back into this formula again. So we've got minus 7.6 recurring squared and then use our calculators to do some calculator magic and we get 6 over 58.7 recurring and then we do 6 divided by 58.7 recurring and that gives us minus 5 minus 0 0.10208 approximately, I rounded that off, and then that's going to be minus 5.10208. Okay, so that's x2, that's the second term in our iterations. And then we're looking for the last one, x sub 3. So again, we plug that back into the iterative formula 
So we've got minus 6 over minus 5.10208 squared. And we square that and we get minus 5 minus 6 over uh, 26.03122. And then 6 divided by 26.03122, that equals minus 5 minus 0 0.23049. Again, I've rounded that off. And my final answer for the third term is minus 5.23049. Okay, that's a decimal point there. Okay. So I've got my first, second, and third terms using this formula. So the process behind iterations isn't difficult in my opinion. It's just substituting terms into the iteration. What I think a lot of people get confused by is the notation here. So um, iterative formulas can look very complicated because there's an n plus 1 and an n here and a squared here. It can all look... A little bit overwhelming sometimes as long as you're understanding the notation the process is pretty simple okay and then uh, so once you've got those three time three terms the second part of the uh, question can sometimes say uh, explain explain the relationship something like this with and then it might give you a cubic. And this one in this case is x cubed plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. So we need to explain the relationship between this iterative formula and this cubic. And what this is saying is we need to rearrange this formula to get this. Sometimes the question will do this the other way around. They'll give you the cubic and then they'll ask you to uh, rearrange it to give you this formula so but it, in all cases it'll either be rearrange this to give the cubic or rearrange the cubic to give the formula and as long as you're comfortable with rearranging equations you should be fine with this as well okay so let's write this one down here so let's say x equals and in this case I'm going to get rid of this n plus 1 notation and this n because we don't care about that anymore. That's only for this iteration. Now we're just rearranging a formula so we can get rid of it. So we've got minus five minus six over x squared. Let's multiply everything by x squared. So x cubed over here, and then uh, equals minus five x squared, and then minus six. Uh, I think this should be an, a squared in here. Whoops, sorry. And then, so plus both of those to this side. So I've got x cubed plus 5x squared plus 6 equals 0. So just by showing how to rearrange the formula, you show the connection between the iteration and the cubic. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, kind of gone over some some of the basics of iterations. So you can see that just as the iPhone is taking last year's model, improving it and coming up with a better solution, in iterations we take the first term, we put it back into the formula, substitute it back to get to, to work towards the final solution. So in this case, the third term in this iteration is minus 5.23049. What this number is saying is that this might be a solution to this cubic equation here or it might be close to a solution so if you put that number into this cubic so if you cube this number then square it multiply by 5 then add 6 you should get close to 0 if it's not 0 then you could keep iterating and it will get closer and closer to 0 so this is uh, if you like this is an estimate of a solution to the cubic equation and uh, as I said before this has to be a converging iteration and they'll always give you a converging iteration 
if these, let's say if this was a different formula and we we're putting in numbers and they were getting further and further away from each other, let's say this was getting larger and larger, this was 100 and this was 200 and then the next one was 500 or something, that iteration is no use because it's not going closer and closer towards a solution. Hopefully you now understand what iterations are or at least kind of the idea behind iterations and then hopefully this example problem helped you a little bit in understanding iterations as well. Uh, I might go I might do another video in this on this topic as it is pretty in depth and it did come down from an A level topic to GCSE so obviously a lot of people will be struggling with this. Let me know what you thought of this video, leave a like if you found it useful, subscribe if you want to see more content and also in the comments let me know how you feel about iterations. Um, do you feel like you have the process down and if you see an iteration uh, question that you're comfortable or do you still, uh, are you still struggling with the idea of iterations and kind of how to answer those questions? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.